Uh, welcome everybody on Facebook. Let me print this out so I want to show this to you. So today we're going to be looking at the luminescent family. And we're just going to spend the time with the duochromes. So I'm going to show you the duochromes. So I'm going to wave to you and then I'm going to go and flip this camera upside down. So I will miss um, any of you that are going to watch on Friday as I will be in transit to New Orleans um, to one of the trade shows that um, the art world has, NAMTA, National Art Materials Trade Association. Um, let me flip this over. Oh, and I know you're not going to be able to see this upside down, are you? Yeah. So I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, the luminescent family is consists of 19 what are called duochromes. And I'm going to show you those in a moment. Then we'll see those in action. Um, it has seven interference colors. It has two pearlescents. And it has 21 iridescents. So this family of color um, uses both mica and it uses silica. So two different, two different um, coatings that actually coat the particle. So for example, um, duochrome adobe uses uh, two pigments, pigment white 20 and pigment white number six. Pigment white number six, as most of you probably know by now, um, is titanium white. Pigment PW6 colon one is buff titanium. So what they do is they take the titanium and they coat it uh, with mica. And it's kind of interesting how they do that. And I'm going to try to show that here in a second. So today we're only going to be looking at 19 colors. We're going to be looking at all the duochromes. The duochromes are kind of interesting in that they are one pigment that shifts to two colors. So one pigment that goes to two different colors. And it does that because it's both refractive, refractive, and reflective. So it's both refractive and reflective. Um, the iridescent colors are reflective, and we'll go over that when we do that next week. It means you can see them over white and you can see them over dark, whereas the interference colors are refractive. They scatter light, and therefore you can see them over dark, but very, very difficult to see them over a light. The duochrome, the reason you can see two colors with just one pigment is because they are both refractive and reflective. What that means is there's tiny wafers on the, on the particle. It's almost like a, a sugar wafer, if you will. And when light comes in on some of the mica, when it hits it, it goes straight back out again. It reflects light. And sometimes when the particle comes in, it hits the mica and it shoots or silica and it goes in many directions, scatters, and that's refractive. And that's what gives the duochrome its ability to be one particle, but to have two colors associated with it because it's reflective and it's refractive. It both reflects it back directly and it scatters it. Um, super complex uh, chemistry, super, super complex. This is used in the automobile industry. So if you have those really beautiful sparkly cars, you probably either have a duochrome. If it's doing two colors, you can see that young, young, uh, young people tend to like those. They're just really quite gorgeous. Uh, mine is pearlescent. So I have pearlescent paint in mine, and we'll go over the pearlescent um, probably next week or the week after. You will be seeing some artwork. Rajat's going to show his artwork. I believe we may have Carolyn's artwork. If not, we'll see Carolyn next week and see her artwork. Um, and then I'm just going to show you briefly show these to you, and then we will go and we will draw them out and um, have some fun with them. So if any of you use them in any ways, I would love to either hear 
or you know see your artwork would be great. Oh. Let me move this camera closer so you can kind of. John, can you yes. say one more time of which one is seen well over the white and black? So the duochrome you can see over both the black and the white okay. because it both reflects and refracts. And the other and one, that's, would be the, and that's the iridescent. The other one would be the iridescent itself. Oh, the other one. Okay. Yeah. So the the duochrome has both aspects of the interference and the iridescent. Okay. Okay. Got right. it. So it has Got both it. those characteristics. Okay. John. <clears throat> yes. Uh, with the reflective and the refractive, is it a similar principle to? Um, a circular polarizer in a camera? Mm, no, not really. No. No. Right. So thank you. This is the duochrome pearl that we're going to be looking at. Duochrome pearl. So you can see it very well over the white. You can also see it very well over the dark. And if I move it, you may not be able to see it, but I can get it to shift. I can get it to shift. I'll show you one that's much easier to see it shift. This is duochrome oceanic. And you can see it kind of goes to a, a, a gold, but also a green shade to that gold. And then we'll see uh, Giovanni. I think his might even be better. This is duochrome blue pearl. And so the naming structure of this is done by the actual pigment manufacturer. This is uh, duochrome turquoise. They just, they had just a, just a huge, just really reflective. If I put these under the, uh, the uh, photospectrophotometer, the L value would be off the chart because essentially you're just like putting light into a mirror. Um, so super, super high. Nothing would even approach how high they are. This is um, Cabo Blue. So the difference, for example, is this one is more of a gold, and then the turquoise is more of this, more of this green. Here's Duochrome Aqua Marine. And you probably also have, if you have a 266 dot card, you have all these on your dot card. And so you can actually play with them at home. I see Anna just showed that. So yeah. And this is um, duochrome emerald. This is duochrome desert bronze. So you can see on this side, it looks nothing like that side. This is um, duochrome saguaro. So it's all the aspect of the viewer. I get asked quite a bit, can we, um, can you spray some type of a, um, protector or gloss over the top of, of your uh, iridescence, you can. Um, it will also change how the light hits it, which most likely um, will change what the viewer sees. So this is duochrome adobe. This is duochrome autumn mystery. This is cactus flower. So they have a real thing going on with the kind of the southwest. This is duochrome hibiscus.
which is Violet Pearl. And then we'll play with them. So Violet Pearl. This is Mauve. Mauve. This is Tropic Sunrise. Very hard to see here. So it's more of a refractive duochrome. And this is this one, Lapis Sunlight. Trying to get that light on there so you can see it okay this is duochrome violet fantasy and the last one this is um, arctic fire so more of a silver John, can you share how Daniel Smith, um, how the team came up with the names for these? Actually, these are all um, done by the pigment manufacturer. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, good question. And I have a question also. I've been seeing um, the metallics out all over the place for sale, different brands. And how do your... Uh, duochromes and luminescence differ from other duochromes and luminescence? So I don't know what the other manufacturers are, are using um, for getting theirs to, um, I don't know what pigment they're using. So ours are from the, mostly from, they're probably all actually from the automobile industry. They're super high performance pigments because um, they're made to be left out in the sunlight and the weather. So they're just really, really rugged, um, very bright uh, pigments. People ask me, well, is there glitter? There's no glitter. These are actually uh, multi-layered mica uh, pigments. Any other questions on go ahead how fat how fa fine are they ground well, how yeah. small the particles so the particles are probably um probably between three and maybe three and 12 microns so they're not ground um, these are actually coming from the manufacturer as a finished pigment at three to five uh, microns. And then we're not going to change that. When we mill it, we won't have our mill go below the size of the particle. Otherwise, we can change the hue of the color. So say, though, we know that this is a, um, a nine micron particle we won't have our three roll mill go nine or below. We'll set it at a higher level because um, it's not the purpose of trying to change the particle. It's the process of dispersing. So it's getting rid of the air mixture that was put in at time of, of mixing. And it's also to get the gum Arabic around each particle so it lays out in a linear fashion. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We're not trying to accomplish changing the color at the time of the mill. Any, any others? Okay. So what I thought we'd do is we would look at the, hello Besnick. I thought what we'd do is we would look at the- um, Hello John. Hello, everyone. So of the 19 that make up the duochrome, there's five that are coated with silica. 
and there's 14 that are coded or have the mica. So that's kind of the, the, the makeup of the, the duochrome. John? Uh, yes. Uh, my experience of um, silica, do, you, do I assume that's silicon? Yeah. It's a silicate? Um, is is that when it comes in contact with any paint that's watery, it it, it creates cells. If if you spray silicon onto acrylic paint, it kind of it disperses things. Is, is that what that does? No, you know because it's not it's not adding silica. It's actually it's mm -hmm. actually coated when the manufacturing process of making the pigment. Part of the process is how they coat the particle with the silicate um, to give it different layers. Right. So you can get, you know, you can get your particles and how they either attract or resist each other by the surface tension of various particles or by how much water you're using. You can also differ the surface tension. What do some people call that? Um, uh, uh, there's a term that I heard watercolors use. Is it um, viscosity? No, it's no, no, no. no. It's, it's it's tension. Thank you. Uh, but when you see it on your paper, you can actually see sometimes um, a different. Uh, different color will push back against another color and in some instances mm -hmm. it will draw that color in. That's all due to the surface tension, which you can constantly change by how much water you're using on, mm -hmm. on the different um, colors that you're choosing. Watercolor is that, is, that, is that really unbelievably beautiful medium and that many people think it's, um, it isn't complex and it is actually quite complex. There's just all different choices that you're making all the time. And that's probably one of the things that's probably most fun about it is that um, you could do it for a hundred years and it can just all, if you want to, it can always be different. So let's look at some of the actually drawdowns. I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna go to Giovanni and then Rajat so they can show you, uh, Rajat's gonna show you one of his finished works because he's not near his um, studio today. And then Giovanni's gonna show you one of his in action. So Giovanni, you wanna go first? And then we'll show, uh, actually also show Buffy after Rashad, if that's okay. Oh yeah, sure, go. Mm, thank you. Okay, I, I'm trying um, this color. is um, not sure in the camera, it is the shimmering. Is it okay? Yeah. I try to to paint in a, a soap bubble, which is my song bubble, <laughs> and um, this is on a watercolor ground. Is on Mars black. A little zoom back, for sure. Better. Okay, this is a sheet. This is a color. I use the duochrome hibiscus, duochrome violet pearl, blue pearl. Adobe, Autumn Mystery, and the beautiful Saguaro Green. I created this shade of color. And before, when I started to, to drawing, uh, I applied the little point of titanium white and stick for the uh, this little reflection. i show it this part procreate the, the, mm, the light. And then now I start with the, the shade. This is different uh, in a watercolor ground because I, it's a perfect surface for this shimmering. Just a note, these colors are squeezed directly from the 15 ml tubes yeah. into empty pens. Absolutely. In this case, I use the violet pearl, for example, and show it in black and white. Try it. Bonnie, what is the black background? Is that? 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Is that just paint? I mean, uh, Mars black or something? Or? Yeah. This is a watercolor ground. Oh, the ground. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It is the, the same <laughs> subject I tried in this afternoon on black paper, but it's all different. It's the same color, but it's different. This is on paper, this is on Mars black. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And continues with autumn mystery for create the the line shimmery is perfect to may I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, do you uh ha have to uh rinse specially the the brushes, or is the mica easily uh washed off? Usually, usually I prefer uh, use the mm, another brush with you no know, use the normal water core, but uh, I clean oh. the brush very very well after the use, and and changing the water. After because the mica remain on inside the bottom. on the oh, bottom. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Don't use this water for normal watercolor when I paint it with the same. Oh, okay. And and do you have a preference to use uh, synthetic or natural um, bristles? Um, or it's the same. I prefer the synthetic, but um, oh, okay. the synthetic is more hardener for perfect for the this situation this line. And I prefer the Ardenner synthetic flat, for example. Okay. For removing. Perfect, oh. Mm -hmm. For creating the this this part. This, oh, okay. For example. Thank you, Gio. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, John. And continues. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay, so Rajat, can you show everybody your artwork, please? Yeah, sure. Hi, John, and hi, everybody. Oh, As uh, John says, like I'm, I'm presently not not in my studio, so I have used, uh, and I'm running short of tubes. So those who have got the two sixty six colors dot card, all the shades are already there. Okay, and as John explained, how the mica and silica, because these are all min minerals, and these colors are coming in a form of a, I mean, it's like coming from a stone. So similarly, as a, as a visual, which I just did that, if you can, okay, see this. So uh, all the duochrome shades, which I have used on this, particularly if I come closer, you can see that. I don't know whether you'll be able to make out the shimmering, but uh, this is beautiful. One of the really beautiful. And this is this particular subject, you can do this. You know, because the, the stones are coming from this mica only. I mean, the, uh, these colors are coming from the stones only. So <clears throat> it's really one can explore as much as we can. And Very someone nice was to... asking, and someone was asking how these uh, this color duochromes are different from other companies. I can say that, you know, what the best part of DS. Uh, the uh, duochrome colors are consistency. That's the only word I must search because you know that today, whatever the colors I'm using from DS uh, duochrome colors, and if I buy after five years also the same, that the amount of uh, sparkling, the crispness is there, it varies the others. But here it is not. With DS, it is always the same. So the, uh, while manufacturing that, I think the proportion and all this, uh, these things are so accurate. So that is one thing I must say that. And another thing is like, unless and until someone is that, uh, you know, using both the colors verbally, however, we can make them understand, but it will not be possible. But once you use the color in your hand, so you will understand why I'm saying, what are the things? So these it's just like butter, like colors are so good. And as you, someone just now said that 
we need to uh, wash and clean the brush also. Yes, we do have to. Unless and until we want to take keep the same texture with the other colors, you know, the watercolors also, we can do that. But normally we try to clean the brush properly after completion of the painting. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you That's nice. Thank you. And Rick, do you have any of them or you're on mute? I think Mark is there. Then I'll go to Mark too. No. <laughs> Rick, do you have any of the uh, luminescent? Yeah, I have the dot cards. Okay. Which is which is you know what Rajat said and and what Jill said is exactly right. And uh, like you said, to clean the brushes really well. Well, you can buy the soap. You see the brush soap, and just be real careful with it, and 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 wash them out and let them dry and put them up like you normally do. But let me put the camera down. Okay. What, what I wanted to do today was seeing how much I can do with just the, the dot card. And in order to do that, um, one thing that I would suggest to, um, to, to our audience is if you are unsure about what colors you might want to purchase, get the dot cards and then you can figure out whether you know, yeah. what they do and what colors you want to add to your to your paint. So uh, this is a great way of, of doing that. And um, so, and then referencing all of the luminescent colors, that's good too. And then I, like a, I isolated these for today. Well, there's several things that I wanted to uh, show today. And this is the, a photograph, a print of one of the my regular watercolors. And what I did, I printed it in black and white because I wanted to see the values. And then what I would do using the pen and ink, these are, that's a really, really, really tiny pinpoint, the nib. And I've used these pens for years. But what I like about it is as I draw the lines with the pen, then I can take, I know I'm sort of rushing here, but I can just select some of the colors here from the dot card, just like I was painting with other colors as well. But but with, with like you said, the silica and the, and the mica, it really makes a great look, especially if, if this is, would be like a metal building here. The colors go on so well. Put it on, paint them on the rooftops. And of course, I would just continue until I finished the entire piece. But I can, for shadows, if I wanted like a, um, let's see, the cactus flower, the blue. I mean, the dual chrome cactus flower and just put that right underneath for some shadow. I will go here with the violet pearl. Creating that shadow and of course, leaving a lot of it uh, that for the sunlight to come through. And it just builds up on itself. Very nice. And all the shadow areas. But, you know, I'm rushing it a little bit here, but if you take your time, you can really build this up and just look, look how beautiful those colors are. Now I'll go from here mm -hmm. to a more defined piece of work. And the same process here. And, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do a little bit next time we come around. 
working on a piece that I've already finished with watercolor. You see the iridescent colors right here. And I just started applying that. And I will do a little bit more as the, uh, the hour goes. And same with this. This is a pencil drawing. But right here, I think I used, well, I used the Autumn Mystery just right here and see how that see how that enhances that sphere here and i would continue all over the entire drawing now this is on uh this is pencil and prismacolor pencil on uh, bristol board but this paint just goes on very 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 smoothly and it really enhances what I've already created there. Oh, it was out of the way. I just put it here. And the next thing I want to show you, I'm just moving from one to the other just to show what can be done. Now, this watercolor. These are you know, wonderful. Thank you, Rick, for doing that. <laughs> and, well, the peacock, uh, the this turquoise, That's just good. really right on top of that create such a luminous look. Wow. It just just adds to the color a lot. Yeah. So I'll continue to work and move on to the other person. And we'll see what happens when we come back. Thank Beautiful you. job, Ray. Thank you. Uh, Rick, awesome. Beautiful. John, I see Buffy's uh, presentation there. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Oh, I, I found this image on pexels.com and I thought it was beautiful because it has the colors that we were working with today. So I asked Ethel to add this to the chat in case any of you want to try it. And also you could probably do it with the dot card, the color from the dot card. So here's what those five colors look like on white paper, the squirrel green, Autumn Mystery, Hibiscus, Turquoise, and Oceanic. And aren't they beautiful just as colors for regular use? But I haven't tried it on the black yet. So this is an experiment as usual, guys. I'll use the Liquitex Black Gesso because I didn't have any of the black ground. That'll be my next experiment. I'm just going to start with it mixed up. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heart's happy. Look at it. Oh, that's so, wow. That is, I was feeling a little sparkly today. That's, ooh, oh. look at it. Oh, sorry. I forget that I get a little <laughs> too excited. But look at it, even softens. Oh, gosh. Wait, what about the pink? Oh gosh, I'm going to be addicted to this. Okay. Uh, oh, they even blend. Okay. Let's do the water real quick. How fun. What if we use a little skipping to have some of that water effect? There's some of that autumn mystery in there. Oh, yes. That's so pretty. What about the oceanic? So I have a little bit thicker. Uh, Buffy, did you combine it with a uh, wash or it's just watercolor very thick? Very thick. So okay. I wanted to make sure that you guys could see it. Wow. Isn't that fun? This would yes. be to do with like some little, you know, if you guys have kids, this would be so fun to play with them and teach them different ways of doing water. I could see, I mean, I could see so many different things like Rajat's feathers and Caroline Diebel's sea scenes. Yeah. I definitely um, want to use this for some cactus. <clears throat> Gosh, that's really pretty. Very pretty. Let's do a little Very bit. pretty, Buffy. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. And it works. So if you have any, um, Black colored gesso, that works. 
The Watercolor Brown Comes in Black by Daniel Smith, that works. And the Mars Black Paint, like Giovanni's doing. Isn't that pretty? So I'll keep playing around with this. <laughs> but look fantastic. Look Did you get the same effect with um, black paper? Just plain black watercolor paper? I haven't um, painted on black paper yet. So okay. maybe one of the other brand ambassadors can speak to that. I'm, I'm going to try that this week. You're just playing yeah. like you're playing. Yeah, just playing with the colors. But also, I've always used them this way because sometimes you just want that real soft pink or this, mm -hmm. this such a pretty like green gold, I don't know, dusty gold color. And look at, I mean, we all need a little sparkle sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for letting look me at, share. Yes. Beautiful. Look at the vib vibrancy of the colors. And, uh, it's yeah, absolutely beautiful. splendid. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. cool. <laughs> I was just thinking you, you can actually get black uh, and uh, toned coloured paper. So, uh, watercolour paper, that is. Yeah, they have black I have some. I have some, uh, I have some Indian too. paper and I have some from uh, another brand. I can't remember the name of the brand. Yeah. I've also used the centre of my black mats when I cut them out the size of the opening I want. I save the center part and use it to paint on. A watercolor block is usually coated or has a, a black sheet on the top of it when you open it up. That's really good for painting on. Giovanni is inspired <coughs> to do a, a 1970s roller disco because <laughs> I can imagine that would look really nice like that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, bubbles are love... very difficult to paint. So... <laughs> what I what I love about these is that it makes the painting interactive with the viewer. Yes. yes. It, <laughs> that just that... moving the head will will cause the painting to have a different. Yeah, that's a good point. A different. Very rightly said. Yeah. Very rightly said. Yeah. Very yeah. right. They're engaged, really engaged with it. Yeah, it engage. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not static. Yes. Yes, it's fun. It's it's like a performance. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Your eyes, huh? <laughs> right. Well, then if you get really clever, you do two different paintings on the same page. <laughs> One that pops out purple. <laughs> And then there's a chicken that pops out in green. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of your new you grow. Well, I, I wonder, I I wonder what these would look like under a black light for all of us seventies <laughs> babies. <laughs> Get our lava lamp, our black lights out. Lava lamp, yeah. <laughs> hmm. About memory lane. So this is what it looks like on black paper. So this is black paper. It's Stonehenge. Oh, that's what I have. That's the yeah. one I have. Yeah, that's it. Thank yeah. you, John. Yeah. What color is that, John? These colors? Yeah. yeah. These are, I put the duochrome um, emerald here. And this is the duochrome desert bronze. And this is the duochrome saguaro green. Mm -hmm. Okay. There. Beautiful. This is what it looks like on the black paper. Yeah. Oh, nice. It really punches. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. That's beautiful. Cool. Yeah. Another surprise about these pigments, I noticed, John, is even when they're dry, they're still brilliant. So they don't dull down and, and yeah. you know, lose their beauty. That's, I would say they're even more brilliant as they dry because that pigment stays, you know, stays up and it really refracts and reflects the light so, so, so well. Um, I mean, you can watch when I do... 
when I first lay it down, it doesn't look like much, it's but right. now pretty soon that water is going to go inside the paper and it's just going to really just pop. It'll take, um, it's not going to take that long. I see it happening right here, right now. So probably next two or three minutes, it'll just really super pop. Wow. The more yeah. it dries, the more it dries, there's just the more they pop. I was trying to mimic you, but in doing layers, because I like I like that effect. It's really kind of cool. Look so at the fun, shine. Huh? Wow. <laughs> really fun Paint. to play. Yeah. It almost but looks like a snake that's... skin, you know, like a, yes. a, a constrictor snake skin in, in here anyway. Yeah. Right in there. It's yeah, creating it's, a texture. Paper. Well, just imagine all the applications then, like you said, snake skin, alligators, crocodiles, mermaids, unicorns. Yeah. Yeah, mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> Little fashion hummingbirds. Oh, <laughs> yes. mm. Dragonfly yeah. wings. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carolyn takes, you know, some of hers just to a whole different level. She does. Yeah. Don't she... don't ruin it for me by calling it a snake. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I hate snakes. The most can we see Letty's the most effective use part? of this color? Of course. Of course. I didn't hear what you said. The most effective <laughs> use of this color I've seen is actually using it for spiritual artwork so that when you you can see it at one angle but not at another. And that was the most effective I've ever seen it used. Oh, that's mm. pretty clever. Interesting. That's, that's a good, good point. Whoa. The uh, artist was called Catherine Brunk, and she painted the Oklahoma City bombing. And it was oh, one of the most powerful paintings I've ever seen using these paintings, these paints. Wow. wow. Okay. okay, that's cool. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, well, okay. <laughs> and Letty, are you doing any? Letty, are you doing any? No, I'm. I have done them. Um, watch on the on the paper on your. Oh yeah. The same your about. black paper. The same. Yeah, those are really wow. nice. Wow. That's beautiful. Is that gouache? Is that gouache, Letty? Sure. Is that gouache? Oh no, do oh, luminescence. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, goodness. It looks like yeah. jewelry. Oh, oh, they're so yeah. pretty. Mm. It's like windows reflecting light in this. Yeah. 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 It's a stained glass look. In the yes. Stained, yes. For example, yeah. you should frame that hanging on your wall. I know. Frame that hanging on your, you that hang it on your wall. So different. <laughs> Very different in white and beautiful. And Giovanni, are they uh, graded? Because I can see that they're uh, light. Yeah. On one yes, side. I, I, yeah. I did a light see. wash and then a second wash. Right. So, okay. so nice. light, a light layer. Beautiful job. Oh, excellent. Great. Yeah, on the on the left, it is mustone. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then you put the water in. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Just, just, oh, just, like, the, just first, less... the first layer was light. And then uh -huh. I added the pigment. I added the color so to get the mask on. On gotcha. the left. So gotcha. two, two layers. Sample one of the beautiful Arctic fires. Oh, I love the violet. You want a violet fantasy? Lapis. Lapis lazuli? Yeah. Beautiful lapis sunlight. Gorgeous. You so. guys. That's beautiful. I know, huh? I enjoyed so much. That should be in the marketing materials, John, because <laughs> it really showcased, doesn't it showcase those yes. colors? Yes. So beautiful, stunning. Yes. And it's easy. Um, Another advantage. Watch on the, on, my, on the book or Letty books. Mm -hmm. uh, this I one. love your bubble. Where's that bubble? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Giovanni and Letizia do just great drawdowns. Beautiful. My favorite yeah. is Cable Blue. Thank you, John. Yeah. Beautiful. And the, just the. Uh, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, that bubble is just getting better. That bubble better. is beautiful. It's more like a cosmic marble or something yeah, like that. that. Cable yeah. Blue. Blue on ceramic powder. Oh. Cable... What color is that again, oh. Giovanni? Cable Blue. Okay. And Mayan, Mayan Dark Genuine. 
the cabo blu, the, look at the, the ceramic, the shimmer of ceramic. ceramic. Okay. Directly. Did you, have, yeah. did you coat it? Did you coat it with anything? The ceramic no. one? No, no. Just straight on. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, no. I mean after after you paint it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Did you? What did you see? Could you go over? Could John? Could you go no, over? No, I didn't see. I didn't choose any teal. No okay. teal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I didn't hear what you said. Do you know what I'm thinking? These would be very good for. Imagine a, a, a like a New York City night oh. scene, <laughs> and you've got all your neon lights. Yeah, I I, I prefer the mar mars black. So pretty! Wow, that's beautiful, Gio. Very nice. interesting, Gio. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think that's the New Year's ball they drop. Uh, much prettier. And yeah, the paper is different. Wow, nice. I love all the ideas, Ian, that to use it for city is a good idea too. Like if you want to do the Vegas skyline or Miami or, you know, yeah, really good idea. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. John, can you talk about the reflective refractiveness in terms of uh, either silica or the mica and how the, what the difference is again? So it's it's not necessarily because of the of either the silica or the mica. It's just some of the um, to get the colors the manufacturer has chosen on some of them to use the silica. Um, but on all of the duochromes, whether it's using it's being encrusted in the silica or it's using and being coated by the mica, um, they're all both refractive and reflective because of, uh, let me show it to you, let's see it here. It's, it's because on the, if I looked at the um, interference, When the light comes down on the interference, it's going to refract. That's just how this particle was was manufactured. So that's going that's to be funny. refractive or scattering. It's going to scatter everywhere. And then if I look at the iridescent, when that same light wave comes down and hits the iridescent, it's going to reflect like that. So that's the iridescent. Mm -hmm. And then the duochrome, because it's made of both A and B, it's made of both of these. Refract. In some instances, light's going to come down and it's going to refract. And in some instances, it's going to come down and it's going to refract. So you have both those characteristics happening in the duochrome because it is both A and B. And so it doesn't matter whether that is particles being encrusted in the silica or that particles being encrusted in the mica. Um, when it was made and why it's a duochrome is that it has multiple pieces inside of this particles made up of both. So it has both characteristics. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Great question. So I like this thing that you were doing, but I'm not quite at the same place you were doing it. Um, but I really like that 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 effect. Yes, very nice. Yeah. Here's that one now that it's kind of dried more. You can see it really leaves just a huge amount on the surface. It actually gets brighter. That's so pretty. Yeah, pretty. it just gets brighter. Wow. I was thinking, I was just thinking too, maybe we can use it to doll up an old painting, like one that's, you know, I don't know. Lots of ideas from this. Give a second chance, yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Don, what's the closest color to you to your right hand? It's one that's closest, like the blue. This one? Yeah, what's that? Yeah. This one is duochrome lapis sunlight. 
Okay. Pretty, pretty, oh. pretty color. It is a very pretty color. It's right. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Up here to the combo, which is mm. much dark, much. You know, it's incredible how much yeah. they change uh, on black background because I'm looking at it in uh, white and it's just pops yeah. in black. It's beautiful. Black or dark, you know, if you had like a dark green, you had a dark mm -hmm. red, anything that's dark is going to pop. It's going to pop more um, than just white. And they're yeah. all transparent, which is yeah. nice. Yes, they're all transparent. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a very good point. So why don't we look at, let's look at Rick and we'll come back to Buffy for a second and we'll see the bubble. So Rick, we'll come back to you real quick. Okay. Well, let's see. Look at that. That's cool. Rick, that's beautiful. You have a neat painting style. Yeah. I know, huh? You look, I went back and, and put these colors on top of a number of the colors and you can't see the sheen from, from this view, but when I've Hold it up to the light. It really has a nice uh, look. And then with this piece, oh, I, yeah. I've really applied it all over these spheres and even the dragonfly as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see the get oh, up yeah. real close. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And the Beautiful. blue right there. It just really gives it and and like the wings here, they're yeah see through yeah. them, but it gives that nice that nice. Glow, I guess you might say. Mm -hmm. I think it, mm -hmm. it lends itself to very Art Deco style art. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's what yes. I'm getting from that now. Beautiful. And that piece that I've been working on, too, it needs to dry more where I can apply more of the, of the paint on top of it to give it a little bit more uh, contrast. Mm -hmm. Very nice, Rick. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank awesome. you. And Giovanna, can you, can you see your bubble? <laughs> bubble king. Wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's yeah. awesome. I love that bubble. So nice. Yeah, and in the scale, I, I continue the line and, and the shade of the blue pearl. It's just incredible how you get those mixtures. I just know. Beautifully well together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is so beautiful. It is so liquefying looking. And Adobe, nice. Adobe is very perfect for the the shimmer detailing. Beautiful. And how it lays on top of the darker colors. Mm -hmm. And I love the, this, for example, when I use the blue pearl. Wow. Beautiful. I, wow. That's so amazing. In this case, on the, on the line is not remain the center, but created this little, little line. It's very mm. interesting. This is the natural line. Is natural what kind line. of yeah, pencil is yeah. that? Natural edge. Yeah. Gia, what really kind good. of pencil is that? Oh, it's simple white pencil, yeah. Pastel pencil. Okay. I yeah. wonder yeah. whether a nice project would be a a, a, a very close up of a cat's eye. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah well, a really nice sparkly eye. Awesome. Really blown up. So let's go to Buffy really quick. Thank you, Joe. You're yeah, right on. No, thank you. Buffy, can we see yours? Oh. So, so here's the first one I did dried. So you can see how it just really plays so fun. And then this was an ink sketch I did and it was just kind of white and was kind of boring. So I used these mm. colors as a light glaze and mm -hmm. look at how beautiful, beautiful. they ended together. Wow. Mm. Beautiful bunch. Stunning. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> beautiful. That's beautiful. Very nice. So yeah. you can really get that sunset or dusk or dawn yeah. kind of 
And yeah, so these colors not only are beautiful individually, but look at how they just completely blended together. That's so cool. Wow. Nice. Very nice. This Very is nice. on white paper, and then this is on black. I like that. That's really neat. So you can really see how versatile these colors are. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Beautiful. So, John, how about showing your finished work one more time? Yes. Just. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah. So that's another usage. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Those Very are nice. great. You rock, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he rock. I was thinking the same rock, thing. Rock, rock and Rajat. <laughs> rock and Rajat. <laughs> nice. As you said, I take it as a compliment. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank, you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Can you show everybody's work, please? Lovely. Lovely. Oh, very nice. Lovely. Wow. Awesome. Very nice. Ian's up there, too. So we see Ian's as well. Yeah. Awesome. And Anna's somewhere. Okay. Thank you all so very much, Sandra. Thank you for showing yours, too. Thank you, everybody, for showing your work. Always love to see your work. So if you want to show it, by all means, just say something and we'll put a spotlight on it. Um, Thank you for sharing. Tomorrow we'll do uh, a uh, session with an artist. I won't be with you tomorrow. I'll be in transit to um, New Orleans to do a trade show. Um, Ooh, in the coldest of uh, uh, Seattle to the, I guess, a little bit warmer of New Orleans. I will miss you. So thank you for joining today. It's always thank you, John. Thank you, John. Have thank fun you, in New Orleans. Thank, thank, you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, John. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.